When it comes to implementing mathematical solutions, a very common pattern that you're going to see is being asked how to implement the Fibonacci sequence. So right here we have a basic expectation for the first 10 Fibonacci numbers. Now if you're not familiar with the sequence, this can give you a little bit of a tutorial where the first two numbers are added together followed by the next two. So in other words, zero plus one equals one. One, and so you put the sum, you put the total right here, and then you add the sum plus the preceding value. So you have one and you add that to one and you get two. You have two, add it to one, you get three. Three plus two is five, five plus three is eight, so on and so forth, all the way to the 10th number in the sequence, which is 89. So this is a very common kind of pattern, but it can be a little bit tricky if you have never had to implement it before. And one of the tricks is using the inject method not once, but actually using it twice and starting off with a little bit of a different return value, or I should say a default value, and that's what we're gonna implement here. So I'm going to create a method called Fibonacci, and it takes a number, because we want the ability to generate any number of Fibonacci sequence numbers. So this is going to be number. So as you may have guessed, we're gonna start off with a range, starting from one to whatever number gets passed in. So in other words, when we want the first 10 items, this is gonna go from one to 10. Now the next thing we need to do is pass in the inject method, but instead of just starting off inject at zero, we're gonna do something a little bit different here where we're gonna start it off with an array of zero and one. So this is going to give us a starting point for the Fibonacci value. So this is gonna give us these first two values here. Now that is the first part, but now what we need to do is have a nested inject method. So inside of inject, we remember that we have our accumulator, and here I'm just gonna call it fib, and what we wanna do with fib is add it, and this is going to be an array, and the reason we know it's gonna be an array is because we're starting with zero and one. So this is our accumulator here. Instead of starting with a number, like how we would usually do for just summing values, we're starting with an array, and this fib block variable is gonna represent this array. So I'm gonna say fib, and then say that we wanna add to it, and then all we have to do is say fib dot last and say the last two because we want the last two values and then we're going to run inject again and just pass in that we want to add the items together. So what exactly is going on right here? Well, here we have a block and inside of this block, we have a block variable. This is the array. And inside of the array, we wanna say that we wanna add a new element to the array, and that new element is going to be the sum of the last two items. So if you come down here and look at the sequence, what this is going to do is this is gonna take the last two items, which are zero and one, and then it's going to add the sum as a new element, and that's how we would get one. Then it's going to go through it again, and it's going to add the sum of these two elements, and it's gonna add that as a new element, and it's gonna keep on going until we tell it to stop. So that is really all that's happening. If you've never implemented this before, though, it may not be that intuitive, so this is definitely a good one to practice. Let's say that we want the Fibonacci numbers or the sequence for the last 20, or for the first 20 items in the sequence. 
if I run this and see exactly what this gives us, you can see how quickly the Fibonacci numbers grow, starting at zero and going all the way, following the same pattern. Notice that this takes us right to 89, which is the 10th Fibonacci number, then 144, 233, and it keeps on going all the way up to by the 20th number, we're already at 10,946. So this is giving us the exact Fibonacci sequence and hopefully you can see how intuitive it is by leveraging inject and nesting that inside of another inject so that's and that's a big reason why I wanted to include this guide in the list of coding exercises one because Fibonacci is a very common coding question but also because a lot of people think that the inject method is simply meant for adding and multiplying items together but in all actuality, a very common pattern that you'll see Inject used for is for building collections and building collections based off of calculations, exactly like what we're doing. So right here, we're using Inject the first time to build a collection. That's the reason, or this is how we can get this larger collection here. But then inside of that block, we're using inject in order to simply perform a traditional addition type of calculation. So these are two common ways of using the inject method. So if I save this file and run it, I'm gonna say RSpec February 18th. We're gonna run it and you can see we have one example with zero failure. So nice work if you went through that. You now know how to build a Fibonacci sequence generator.